guys, it's me, Wohoni. I apologize that it's been a minute. <laughs> And I hope that you guys missed me. Uh, a lot has happened. I, w I went to college. I made a bunch of amazing friends. I dropped out. I got a job. But most importantly, I learned so much. Because that transition between childhood and adulthood is such a weird time that they don't teach you about. Like, you're just kind of just tossed out here. So I just want to share with y'all, like, what I learned. But enough of this fucking guy, right? Let's listen to the same guy, but four months earlier on a different camera because I got a new camera. But regardless, this video is all over the place and you're probably wondering, you know, what's the point? If I'm going to be vulnerable and talk about my feelings on the internet, then this is, um, what I, this is what I want to say. Number one, why you suck. Number two, why I suck. Number three, how to exist without sucking. And number four, I'm going to show you guys my balls. My manager said I need to put something that keeps people watching until the end of the video. So maybe my balls, if you got you. Number one, why you suck. This obviously does not apply to everyone. And the reason I never finish this video is because I don't want to come off as like preachy or like I know what's right and you will listen to my. What? Alright. I gotta charge my shit. Ugh. You guys ever licked a battery, like a, a nine volt battery, and then shocked your tug? You guys know I ate a Tide Pod six years ago? That's a fun fact. <laughs> Alright, we, we plugged in. But I'm just kind of imagining, if I watched this video four years ago, when I was 17, what would I have wanted to hear? And this is it. The reason why you suck is because you think you suck. And I don't really think anyone sucks. Nobody knows what the fuck they're doing because we don't wake up next to a pre-made list of the correct things to do that will be good for your career and your health and your happiness and your hygiene and your friends and your family and your balls and the environment and for homeless people and for old people and whether or not to confront that dude you caught sniffing the teacher's chair after class. Um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, there isn't a pre-made list of how to do those things perfectly every single day or week or month or year until the day we fucking die. But even if there was this perfect list, we could follow it perfectly every single day and then still get struck by fucking lightning! We are expected to be perfect in an imperfect world. And we have no idea how perfect anyone else is compared to us because we can't know. We're not in their brain. And some of the people that seem to keep it together the most are actually the most fucked up in ways that we can't even see. So most of the time we expect more from ourselves than we expect from other people and we aren't patient enough with ourselves we are going to make mistakes it's just how you learn from them part two why i suck i suck because i'm good at giving advice but not taking it i don't take my own advice i self-sabotage i convince myself that i'm not good enough i lack self-control and discipline and i always always have an excuse i always tell myself tomorrow it'll be different but like once the semester ends i'll have time to fix myself and really work on stuff or once the semester starts i'll have more structure and i'll be able to do more things it's a new it's a new year it's a new month like april's my month you know um i'll just wait till april it's always i will rather than i am and i'm so deep in this hole to the point where i don't even know if i can get out of it i ran away from my dad's when i was 17 and my mom is homeless and she can't even support herself so i'm pretty much on my own and if i keep sitting here then the dream is gonna fade away and i'm not gonna be able to support myself and i'm not gonna be able to pay for school and then what i have three fully edited youtube videos that took me like 30 hours each just sitting on my desktop that now i think are dumb and stupid and not funny and i don't want to post them i flew to north carolina and filmed a tiktok with mr beast last year and i never posted it and i've rewritten the script for this video like six times since i first had the idea six months ago and every day i put it off or don't put something out then my audience gets smaller and smaller and you know, people start caring less and less. And that's just how the internet works. If I stop posting, there's just gonna be five more equally talented, if not more talented creators for you guys to watch. And at the end of the day, I can blame whatever I want on my childhood or my environment, but I am the only thing getting in my way. But Will, you just told us to be patient with ourselves. Like it doesn't sound like you're being very patient with yourself. Yeah, well, uh, shut up, uh, kinda, you know, it's, <laughs> it's different, all right? Um, I tried being patient with myself for the last two years. I turned being patient with myself into an excuse. I would self-sabotage and be like, yeah, no, like this is fucked, but I'm gotta be patient with myself so it's fine right but in reality it's a balance it's baby steps it's being honest with yourself and genuinely asking yourself like am i taking steps in the right direction did i make better decisions this month than i did last month am i using my time as productive as i am willing and able to which is a hard question because it's like i don't even know what i'm supposed to be doing with my time like i wrote this in my school library when i was supposed to be studying for a spanish midterm i should be studying the fuck bro silly ass intro <laughs> bro who is this guy i don't fucking hey, hey my boy kid look at la cogida all right what are we talking about que ca carajo
estoy haciendo. Oh shit. Qué carajo. Qué carajo. Qué carajo estoy haciendo. Qué carajo. Qué carajo estoy haciendo. Parajos de un tiro. What? I don't know what I'm saying. I wrote this shit four months ago. I don't know what this says. I think I use Google Translate that ass. It's scary that every decision that I make is going to change my future for better or for worse. Some decisions more than others. And there are no right or wrong answers because there's such a big gray area between right and wrong. Like, I don't even like how this video is changing the course of your guys' lives. Like, what if you didn't click on this video and you clicked on one like how to cook like Gordon Ramsay and then you could have found a passion for cooking and then like became an awesome chef and then opened a soup kitchen for the homeless with your riches and then cured cancer and met Obama. Like, and instead you're watching this video. <laughs> like, honestly, I, I don't have the answer. Life is more complicated than this however many minute video. But if there was a kid that went up to me and was like, I just spawned into existence. I have no family. I don't know what's going on. I have no friends. And I can only ask one person for advice on how to live my entire fucking life. Um, and I'm asking you. Then this is what I would say, I think. Part three, how to exist without sucking. Rule number one, support system. You can't do this shit alone. And the hard part is picking the right people. You can't just go out and find the first people you see and then rely on them for your emotional support. You know, like find some fools that, that really care about you. These are people that you should be able to talk to about anything, even if the problem is them. Barriers down, no walls, just the ability to be vulnerable around someone. Do you have friends that you can cry to? Do you have friends that you can set boundaries with? Or, you know, let them know how they could be a better friend to you. If not, then you gotta get better friends, but also be able to honestly ask yourself, was I the problem? Was I receptive to constructive criticism? Was I defensive? Can I admit when I'm wrong? But that's a whole other thing. Let's just assume the answer is no, I am not the problem. Sometimes the friends you have the most fun with can make you feel the worst. Or maybe they don't make you feel the worst, but they bring you down. Maybe they prevent you from being the best version of yourself. But you know, I can't act like it's easy to find good friends. I moved around a lot as a kid, so I never really had that growing up because I never had time to get close to people. And even if you have, it's hard to know a person's true character for a while. It's more of recognizing when toxic things are happening to you and dealing with them. Uh, rule number two short-term happiness versus long-term fulfillment a lot of things feel rewarding for you in the short term but are bad for you in the long term and unfortunately that's most things that feel good with junk food with scrolling on tiktok with toxic relationships with drugs and then some things that are harder in the moment will make you feel more fulfilled and happier in the long run like journaling and uh fucking going to bed early and eating healthier and go <sighs> bored but eventually those difficult things just become habits and they're part of your routine rule number three Fuck it. Everything is a balance. And if you're overthinking your life all day, just wondering if your friends are real or if you're going to fuck up and make a bad decision, then you'll never enjoy it. There's a time to be stressed and focused and check in on yourself and make sure that you're doing the right things. But it's also an important skill to stop thinking about it. Like I know a lot of high functioning people that like grind Monday through Thursday and then like fuck off on Friday and Saturday. And then like Sunday, they just like kind of recoup and regather. And I think that's a dope ratio that like works. And this kind of balance helps you kind of just squish all your insecurities and problems into a ball and then like separate it from yourself. And it's still there, right? Like these balls of insecurity never leave. It's about like knowing where they are and how they're affecting you helps. And also talking about it helps, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys my balls. It's good, right? It's not good. Part four, my balls. My manager never stopped reminding me about the Mr. Beast TikTok. I mean, it was a huge opportunity, the craziest collaboration I've ever had in my life. Like he's fucking Mr. Beast. And my manager asked me like every week, why not just post it? And at the end of the day, I'm scared of failure. I compare myself to others and think about how I'll never be as good. I've tried to quit. I've told myself that I'm not meant for it, but then I feel dissatisfied. I'm frustrated with myself when I'm not creating. When I was a kid, I was alone a lot, right? Didn't live with my mom. Dad was always out and I didn't have any siblings. So there were two things that I did with my time. If I wasn't grounded, I would watch YouTube, Smosh, Tobuscus, Epic Rap Battles of History, even like random scary videos that I definitely should not have been watching at that age. But I was usually grounded for like months at a time and I didn't have any friends. So no electronics, no friends. It was just me, my notebook, and a pencil. So I wrote. I wrote the dumbest skits and videos, pretending they were YouTube videos. I've been writing scripts for videos since I was 10 years old. That's 11 years. That's what kept me going. It's what I would daydream about in class. So I tried and I failed and I tried and I failed and I tried and I failed. And then I finally find my voice and I gain some traction and then people start taking me seriously and then I stop. Why would I do that? And I think, I think I'm getting there. I want to show up for myself for once. And no matter how terribly this video does, I'm going to start posting again. 
That's a Wahoney promise, which has not really gone well in the past. Because even if this inspires one person, that's one more person than before I made this video. So, you know, obviously, take everything that I say with a grain of salt. I'm some 21-year-old dude on a screen telling you how to live your life. Like, who the fuck, who is this guy trying to tell me what to do? I'm sure there's other blatantly obvious things that I'm missing in this video. So, you know, um, but, you know, leave a comment. But you know, leave a comment and a like and a subscribe. But you know, if you have some wisdom, you know, drop a comment. You know, I'm reading them and I'm constantly learning. And also let me know what you want to see. I could upload some of the videos that I have fully edited. But yeah, um, thanks for looking at my balls.